Welcome everyone. Uh, in the previous video, we have talked about how to design the maximum gain amplifier. And we have seen that for maximum gain amplifier, we could obtain maximum gain at the design frequency and minimum reflection coefficient at this frequency. However, the main problem in the design of maximum gain amplifier is that the gain is varying fast with the frequency such that the bandwidth of this gain is very small. On the other hand, the return loss or the reflection coefficient is very small at uh, the center frequency, but the bandwidth of this reflection coefficient is very narrow. So the main disadvantage of maximum gain amplifier is the narrow band operating width. To overcome this narrow band variation, we can reduce the gain from the maximum value. If we reduce the gain from the maximum value, we can obtain nearly constant gain along wide band, and at the same time, we can obtain nearly constant reflection coefficient at wide band. So, in this lecture, we are going to talk about constant gain single stage amplifier. We say that in many cases, it is preferable, it is preferable to design for less than the maximum obtainable gain to improve the bandwidth or to obtain specific value of the amplifier gain. Actually, this can be done by redesigning the input and output matching network. So, this can be done by designing the input and output matching sections to have less than the maximum gains. In other words, to introduce a slight mismatch. So, mismatches are purposely introduced to reduce the overall gain. Uh, the design procedure in this case is facilitated by uh, plotting what we are calling constant gain circuits. So, we are going to introduce something called constant gain circles for both the input and the output section or for the input and the load sections uh, which will introduce constant gamma source and constant gamma load and this constant gamma source and constant gamma load will be represented by constant circles on this message chart to obtain constant values for GS and GL which represent the gain of the input matching network and the gain of the output matching network. Before going on how to design uh, such constant gain amplifier, the design will be simplified by using unilateral trans uh, transistor. So, at the beginning, we are going to discuss what is the effect of assuming that the transistor is unilateral. So, for many transistors, the value of S12 is usually small enough to be ignored. And in this case, the device can be assumed to be unilateral. Assume that the value of S12 is not completely zero, but is very small value. What will be the effect of such a small S12 on the resulting uh, transducer gain? This can be obtained by what we are calling unilateral figure of merit. Uh, the unilateral figure of merit is what is the magnitude of the transducer gain, the actual gain for the transducer gain, compared to the unilateral transducer gain. Actually, this ratio, the transducer gain over the unilateral transducer gain, this transducer gain is obtained by calculating the actual value of S12, and the unilateral transducer gain is obtained by assuming S12 is zero. This ratio is greater than 1 over 1 plus u squared and less than 1 over 1 minus u all of it squared. Where u here is the unilateral figure of merit, which is defined as the magnitude of S12 multiplied by S21 multiplied by S11 multiplied by S22 over the value of 1 minus S11 squared minus 
multiplied by 1 minus S22 squared. So, in the case of S12 is very small value, this unilateral figure of merit is usually very small value. So, actually, this 1 over 1 plus small value, which is nearly 1, and here 1 over 1 minus small uh, value, which is nearly 1. So, actually, the value of the transducer gain to the unilateral transducer gain is quite close to the ratio of 1. So, nearly, we can approximate that the transducer gain is the unilateral transducer gain. So, this greatly simplifies the design procedure and the error in the transducer gain uh, caused by obtaining or approximating S12 as 0 is given by the ratio GT over GTU. And this value is given in terms of the unilateral figure of merit as follows. So, assuming that you have the S parameters for a, a specific transistor, at the beginning, you are going to calculate the unilateral figure of merit according to the magnitude of the S parameters. And according to the unilateral figure of merit, you are going to determine what is the ratio of the actual transducer gain to the transducer gain by assuming that S12 is 0, which is the unilateral transducer gain you are going to calculate the limit of this ratio. And according to the limit of this ratio, you are going to determine uh, what is the uh, ratio of the error in the calculation by assuming that it is just unilateral transistor. Now, we are going to design the constant gain amplifier by approximating it as a unilateral uh, transistor. So, we start with the design of constant gain single amplifier, assuming that the transistor is unilateral, such that the value of S12 is zero. As we said, the total gain of the amplifier is the gain of uh, the source matching network multiplied by the gain of the, trans the transducer gain of the transistor multiplied by the gain of the load matching network. The gain of uh, the source matching network is given by 1 minus the reflection coefficient gamma source squared over 1 minus S11 of the transistor multiplied by gamma source, all of them squared. On the other hand, the unilateral transducer gain of the transistor when S11, uh, S2, S12 is 0. A uh, G node, it would be the magnitude of S21 square. The output matching circuit, it's again GL, it would be 1 minus the reflection coefficient gamma L square over 1 minus S22 of the transistor multiplied by gamma load, all of them square. As we said in the previous video, for maximum gain amplifier, the value of gamma n would be conjugate matching to gamma source. So, for maximum gain, gamma n equal gamma source conjugate. And effectively, the value of gamma n for unilateral transistor, it would be S11. This means that the value of gamma source is S11 conjugate. Or in other words, for maximum gain, it would be 1 minus S11 squared over 1 minus S11 squared, all of them squared. So it would be 1 over 1 minus S11 squared. So the maximum uh, gain for the input matching network for unilateral case, it would be 1 minus or 1 over 1 minus S11 squared. In a similar way. The gain for the output matching network. The maximum gain will be obtained when gamma output of the transistor would be conjugate matching to gamma load. And effectively, for unilateral transistor, gamma output is S22. This means that at maximum gain, gamma load is S22 conjugate. If we apply gamma load here as S22 conjugate, so this would be 1 minus S22 squared over 1 minus S22 squared, all of them squared. 
which can be simplified as 1 over 1 minus S22 square. So, the maximum, for maximum gain uh, transistor or for maximum gain amplifier, the value of G source maximum is 1 over 1 minus S11 squared and the value of GL maximum is 1 over 1 minus S22 squared. All this analysis, assuming that the value of S12 is 0 for unilateral transistor only. Alright? Okay. Now, if we multiply GS maximum by G0 by GL maximum, we will obtain the maximum gain from this amplifier. But actually, we are not interested in the maximum gain. We need smaller gain than the maximum value, but it would be constant uh, along certain frequency band. So, in this case, we are going to obtain value of GS, not GS maximum, and value for GL, not GL maximum, and the total gain, it would be GS multiplied by G0 multiplied by GL. We are going to define uh, something called normalized gain factor for both the source matching network and load matching network. So the normalized gain factor for the source matching network would be small gs is actually the value of gs the actual gs over gs maximum and we said that the value of gs it was 1 minus gamma source squared over 1 minus s11 multiplied by gamma source all of them squared this for any arbitrary value of gamma s not gamma s equal gamma in conjugate okay so this is arbitrary value over the maximum value, which was 1 over 1 minus S11 squared. So, the ratio of the general GS value, or general uh, source matching network gain, over the maximum source uh, matching gain, GS over GS maximum, is defined as the normalized gain factor GS. So, by dividing this by this, we obtain that the normalized gain factor for the source is 1 minus gamma S squared over 1 minus S11 multiplied by gamma source all of them squared multiplied by 1 over 1 minus S11 squared, which is actually the reciprocal of GS maximum. Okay? In a similar way, the normalized gain factor for the load would be the value of the load gain over the value of the maximum load gain so GL over GL maximum it would be 1 minus gamma load squared over 1 minus S22 gamma load all of them squared multiplied by 1 minus S22 squared it should be noted that the normalized gain vectors GS and GL are greater than or equal 0 and less than or equal unity when it would be unity, it means that the input matching gain is actually the maximum value. And in the similar way, when GL equals unity, it means that the load matching gain, it would be the maximum value. And in the case GS and GL are unity, it means that this amplifier is designed into maximum gain. But for constant gain, we are going to use value of GS and GL slightly less than unity. If they are zero, it means that there is no amplification at all. Okay? So, it is expected that the value of GS and GL are slightly less than unity for constant gain amplifier. Okay. Now, let us see what is the relation between the normalized gain factor GS and the reflection coefficient coming from the source and the S parameters of the transistor according to, the, to this relation the value of GS equal 1 minus gamma source squared over 1 minus S11 gamma source all of them squared multiplied by 1 minus S11 squared effectively we are interested in finding out the value of gamma source. So, 
for a specific gain or for a specific uh, normalized gain factor, we are interested in finding what is the value of gamma source. Actually, if we are talking about maximum gain, if we are talking about maximum gain, the value of gamma source it would be simply uh, gamma input conjugate, which is S11 conjugate. So for maximum gain, if you are interested in maximum gain, if the value of GS is unity. So gamma source, it would be just single value, which is uh, S11 conjugate, okay? But if the value of uh, the normalized gain factor GS is less than unity, what would be the value of gamma source? Uh, effectively, gamma source here is inserted in the S parameters of the transistor and will introduce the normalized gain factor, which we are, which is a design parameter. We are designing an amplifier with uh, a gain for the source uh, matching network less than the maximum by certain ratio. So this is the design va uh, value, and this is a parameter of the transistor. So what is the unknown in this problem? The unknown is the value of gamma s. So by some algebraic relations, we can convert this relation to separate the value of gamma s in one side and all the remaining terms in other sides. Okay? So, to do this, we obtain gamma s as a separate value minus gs, which is the design parameter, which we are going to design. We are going to design amplifier with uh, a source gain less than the maximum gain or a source gain to the max maximum source gain, uh, for example, 0.8. So this value is a design parameter multiplied by S11 conjugate, which is a parameter of the transistor over 1 minus 1 minus GS multiplied by S11 squared equal all of this magnitude equal square root 1 minus GS multiplied by 1 minus S11 squared over 1 minus 1 minus GS multiplied by S11 squared. Actually, after we, we have rearranged this equation to this equation, this equation in the complex uh, reflection plane, the value of gamma s is a complex quantity. So it is real and imagined. The value of GS is a real value. The value of S11 is a complex value. But 1 minus 1 minus GS multiplied by the magnitude of S11 squared, all of this is a real value. So Effectively, this is a complex value minus complex value, and we're taking the magnitude of this value, okay? Equal a certain value. This value, all of these values are real values, and all of these values are positive values. Effectively, this equation in the complex plane represents a circle. So, the trace or the loci of uh, the reflection coefficient of the source which introduce the normalized gain factor GS here is a circle in uh, the complex gamma plane. The center of this circle as a complex value is this value. So the center of the circle is GS multiplied by S11 conjugate over 1 minus 1 minus GS multiplied by S11 squared. This is a complex value represents the center of the circle which corresponds to constant gamma source. And the radius of this circle is this value, which is pure real value. Okay? Uh, it should be noted that if you look at the center here, GS is a real value. All the denominator is a real value. So, the complex value is S11. S11 conjugate, uh, its angle uh, in the complex plane is minus the angle of S11 because this is a conjugate of S11. So the center of the circle for constant gamma circle, the center of the constant source gain circle lies along a straight line uh, given by the angle of S11 conjugate, which is negative of the angle of S11. Assuming that 
S11 as a magnitude is X and its angle is phi. So the location or the center of the constant uh, source gain circle, gamma C A circle, it should be at an angle minus phi. Right? On the other hand, if the value of gamma source not gamma source maximum gamma source if the value of gamma source is chosen to be unity if gamma source is unity if gamma source is unity so in this case the circle of gamma source the circle of gamma source it should uh, pass by the center of the Smith chart. What is the center of the Smith chart? The center of the Smith chart when gamma source equal zero. So if the gain S, GS is unity, if we look at the value of gamma source equal zero, it would be one minus zero over one minus S11 multiplied by zero. So it is one over one, it would be one. So for zero dB constant gain, or in other words, for the value of GS is unity, the circle gamma source always pass through the center of the Smith chart. To understand what uh, these equations mean, let us assume a numerical example. Assume that I have a transistor which has its parameters as a function of frequency like this. Here, the value of S12 is zero. It means that this transistor is a unilateral transistor. So our analysis is applied for this transistor diode. Okay. Now, according to the value of GS maximum, we said that the value of GS maximum is 1 over 1 minus the magnitude of S11 squared. So it would be 1 over 1 minus 0.7 squared, 0.75 squared. And the value which uh, by calculating this, it can be obtained as uh, here as a ratio by taking 10 log uh, this value, we can obtain GS maximum 3.6 dB. Assuming that we are going to design a constant gain amplifier by using uh, a source gain less than the maximum value such that the source again is 3 dB only instead of 3.6 dB. What is the value of gamma source in this case? To obtain the value of gamma source, we are going to draw the constant gamma source circle. And to draw the constant gamma source circle, we need to determine what is the center of the constant gamma circle and what is the radius of constant gamma circle. So, according to the value, of the required gain GS and the value of GS maximum, we are going to convert it, both of them as values instead of dB and take the ratio of GS over GS maximum. We find that uh, the ratio of the normalized gain of the source equals 0.875. So this is the value of the normalized gain factor. Now we are going to apply the normalized gain factor with the value of S11 of the transistor here to obtain the center of the constant gamma source circle so the center of gamma source circle it would be GS multiplied by S11 conjugate over 1 minus 1 minus GS multiplied by the magnitude of S11 which is 0.75 squared by doing this we can find the center of uh, the constant gamma circle is located at the point 0 0.7 with an angle 120 degrees in the, in the gamma plane, on the reflection plane. Alright? On the other hand, the radius of the constant gamma circle, it would be square root 1 minus GS multiplied by 1 minus S11 squared the magnitude of S11 squared, magnitude 0.75 over 1 minus 1 minus GS multiplied by S11 squared. By calculating this, we can find the radius of the constant gamma circle is 0.166. Now let us draw it. To draw it, 
we say that okay at the beginning the center is located at point 706 here with an angle 120 degrees here is the center of the Smith chart this is the x-axis so this is the angle 0 we are going to move with an angle phi equal to 120 so this line is located at an angle 120 degrees the radius from the center to this point corresponds to unity we need only 0.706 so by taking the ratio from point from unity to 0.706 we can allocate the center of uh, the constant gamma circle for gs equals 3 at this point so this is the center point now from this center point we are going to draw a circle with a radius the radius here the radius is 0.166 as i said the volume one is from the center to the edge of uh, the smith chart here all right so if i'm talking 0 0.166 so 1.6 uh, 1.166 from this value all right so this is the radius 0 0.166 from the radius of the smith chart so this circle any point on this circle correspond to the value of gamma source which will introduce a gain source or a gain of the matching network of the source equal 3 dB assuming that we were talking about a gain of 2 dB in this case the value of GS it would be the corresponding gain as a ratio over the gain maximum as a ratio the value of gs in this case it would be 0 0.875 once again we are going to calculate the value of the center for gamma source and the radius for the, uh, the radius for the circle of gamma source the center in this case according to the new value of gs and according to the value of s11 it was 0 0.627 with an angle 120 degrees once again the angle is 120 degrees which is the angle of the conjugate of s11 all right and the radius in this case it would be 0 0.294 so if we are representing the gain the source gain equal to db we have the value of gs 0 0.691 I'm sorry, uh, I think the two values are replaced. So, this value should be replaced with this value. I'm not sure. Okay. But the value of CS, the center, it would be 0 0.627 with an angle 120 degrees. And the radius is 0 0.294. So, in this case, the radius it would be 0 0.6 and as I said 0 0.6 is 0 0.6 from the unity all the radius here is unity so 0 0.6 of this radius with an angle 120 degrees and the value of the radius is 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.294 0 0.294 this is the radius and this is a circle of constant gamma circle for 2 dB so any point on this circle for the value of gamma s will introduce a constant gain equal gs equal to db in a similar way any point on this circle will introduce constant gain gs equal 3 db the maximum gain is 1 over 1 minus s2 s11 square which is in db is 3.6 db 
uh, this is located at the point gamma source equal gamma input conjugate and gamma, gamma input conjugate is S11 conjugate and the value of S11 conjugate is 0 0.75 with an angle 120 actually this is a point of G maximum so effectively the value of G maximum represents a circle with a radius 0 so the center is G, uh, GS maximum and its radius is 0 so this is the value of GS maximum here any value of this gamma source would be correspond to GS equals 3 here gamma source will correspond to GS equals 3.6 here any point on this circle will correspond to gamma uh, GS equal 2 dB ok alright assuming that we have decided to design an amplifier with a constant gain for the source matching network 2 dB. As I said, any point on this circle will correspond to a constant gain 2 dB. If we are looking for the input matching network and the bandwidth, it would be preferred to take the point which is near to the center of the smith chart or to take the point which is quite close to the matching this means that the optimum point for the value of gamma source which will introduce gain equal to dd is this point the intersection point of the constant uh, gamma source circle with the line connecting to the origin and this point which is near to the origin so the optimum point for gamma source would be this point on the other hand the worst point for gamma source it would be this point which is the farthest point from the origin okay so, if you are talking about the matching, if you are talking about uh, the operating bandwidth, the best point to be used is the nearest point to the origin. But, as we will see in the next video, when we are talking about the noise, we may not use this point, we may use another point uh, to make a compromise between the matching and the noise figure. But, at least now, we are talking about matching only. So, in this case, the optimum matching or the, the optimum matching for the gain 2 dB is this point. This point actually, uh, if we read it uh, from this message chart, the radius here with respect to the overall radius is 0.33 and its angle is 120. So, the value of gamma source is 0.33 with an angle 120. Assuming that the source is 50 ohms load and we are using 50 ohm transmission line sections so by using the required gamma source we can design the required matching circuit such that the input reflection from uh, or the input reflection after uh, the matching network here it would be 0.33 with an angle 120 okay According to this value, for example, uh, the input matching network it would have a, a shunt, an open shunt circuit or an open shunt uh, stop with 0.1 lambda uh, and li transmission line transformer with 0.179 lambda. So this matching network will introduce a value of gamma source equal 0 0.33 with an angle 120 degrees and this reflection coefficient will introduce uh, a source gain equal to dv in this case if we design the matching network for the value of gsc maximum here we are going to introduce the maximum gain but in this case 
this maximum gain will not introduce or would be very narrow band. In a similar way, we are going to do the same steps for uh, the load gain set or the load gain uh, matching network. We are going to introduce uh, the normalized load gain factor GL, which is the required load gain over the load gain maximum. And as we have presented before, this value is 1 over 1 minus gamma load squared over 1 minus S22 multiplied by gamma load all of them squared multiplied by 1 minus S22 squared. Once again, here the value of the normalized gain vector GL is a design factor. We are going to design our amplifier such that the value of GL equals so and so. And the value of S22 is a parameter for the transistor which has been used in the design. Uh, what is the unknown here? The unknown is the value of gamma L. What is the value of gamma L which represents the gain GL which is the required gain. So we are going to rearrange uh, this equation to separate the value of gamma L in one side and all the remaining terms including the value of GL and S22 in other terms. By doing this we can represent it as the magnitude of gamma L minus GL multiplied by S22 dash or sorry S22 conjugate over 1 minus 1 minus GL multiplied by the magnitude of S22 squared the magnitude of this equals the square root 1 minus GL multiplied by 1 minus the magnitude of S22 squared over 1 minus 1 minus GL multiplied by the magnitude of S22 squared once again uh, gamma L is a complex value this value is a complex value this equation is equation of a constant circle so gamma L is represented as a constant circle uh, the center of the circle is the value GL multiplied by S22 conjugate over 1 minus 1 minus GL multiplied by the magnitude of S22 squared and the radius of this circle is the square root 1 minus GL multiplied by 1 minus S22 squared over 1 minus 1 minus GL multiplied by S22 squared. Once again, we can note that the center of the constant gamma load circle uh, lies along the straight lines given by the angle of S22 conjugate, which means that if S22 is x with an angle phi, the center of the constant gamma load circle would be with an angle minus phi. And once again, if the constant gain circle GL is unity, if the value of GL is unity, so the constant gamma L circle it passes by uh, the center of the Smith chart. Okay. Uh, let us see a numerical example for this. Assume that we have this transistor once again with these parameters. So the value of G load maximum is 1 over 1 minus S22 squared as a magnitude. So 1 minus uh, 0.6 squared. This would be 1.56 by taking 10 log of this value is 1.9 dB. Assuming that I'm going to design uh, the amplifier with uh, a load gain less than this value such that the load gain is 1 dB. So the load matching network gain is 1 dB, just 1 dB. In this case, the normalized load gain factor, GL, it would be GL over GL maximum by taking uh, the value here and uh, converting this value from dB to uh, normal values and taking the ratio, we can find the normalized load gain as 0.806. Here we obtain the normalized gain uh, factor. We are going to use this normalized gain factor with the value of S22 to obtain the center of the constant uh, GL circle, or so, uh, sorry, so the, the constant gamma L circle, 
the center of constant gamma L circle it would be GL multiplied by S22 conjugate over 1 minus 1 minus GL multiplied by S22 magnitude square by calculating this it can be found that this value is 0.52 with an angle 70 degrees it can be noted that the angle here is an angle of the conjugate of S22 on the other hand the radius of the constant gamma L circle is the square root 1 minus GL multiplied by 1 minus S22 square over 1 minus 1 minus GL multiplied by the magnitude of S22 square we can find this 0 0.303 uh, in a similar way, if you are talking about load uh, matching network gain, uh, 0 dB, so if you are talking about 0 dB, 0 dB it means that the value of GL as a magnitude is unity. So in this case, the value of the normalized GL uh, or the normalized load gain, GL, is GL over GL maximum. Uh, it would be 0.64 from this we can obtain the corresponding center and the corresponding radius it can be noted here that in this case when uh, the load gain the constant load gain is unity which is corresponding to 0 dB the magnitude of the center and the magnitude of the radius is the same the magnitude of the center and the magnitude of the radius is the same this means that when we are talking or when we are in this center and rotating with this radius we must arrive or we must reach to the center of the Smith chart that actually what we see here here if the value of GL the load gain is unity 1 dB uh, the center uh, it was at 0.52 with an angle 70 and the radius is 0.303 0.52 0.52 is here and here the radius is 0.303 so this is the radius and this is the circle of constant load matching network constant gain of the load matching network such that GL is 1 dB if we are talking about GL 0 dB, so in this case, the center is 0 0.44, 0 0.44 here, and the radius is 0 0.44. So in this case, the circle will have a radius such that the circle passes by uh, the origin or by the center of the Smith chart. Effectively, uh, this would mean that if I'm going to use a value of GL 0 dB, in this case I don't need any matching network to match the load to the output uh, of the amplifier. Because actually I'm going to connect 50 ohm to 50 ohm direct. However, if I'm interested in a constant load gain 1 dB I'm going to choose any point at gamma load circle here any point at gamma load circle of GL 1 dB and it is preferred to use the nearest point to the origin so the nearest point to the origin is this point so according to this point this point is 0 0.22 with an angle 70 degrees 0 0.22 as I said the ratio this length to the total radius of the Smith chart from the center to this point this is the value point two two the angle 70 is the angle from the x-axis here to this point so this is 70 degrees which is the conjugate for the S22 because S22 it was minus 70 degrees so this is the value of gamma L for a constant GL equal 1 dB. If we are interested in matching 
or using a matching network. Uh, for this case, we are going to introduce a matching network such that the input reflection coefficient of a 50 ohm after the matching network it would be 0.22 with an angle 70 degrees. Uh, if we design this matching network uh, by a single stop matching network, it can be obtained by an open circuit stop uh, with a length 0.432 lambda and transmission line section 0.045 lambda. So this matching network will introduce gamma L equal 0.22 with an angle 70 and this gamma L will introduce uh, a load gain for the matching network equal 1 dB. Now let us collect these pieces together but before collecting it uh, we are going to make a summary. Uh, we say that these results can be used to plot family of circles of constant gain for the input and output sections. Uh, according to the value of gamma source and gamma load can be chosen along the circuits to provide uh, the required gains. Effectively, the choice for gamma source and gamma load are not unique, but uh, it makes sense to choose a point which is close to the center of the Smith chart to minimize the mismatch. If we minimize the mismatch, we are going to maximize the bandwidth. However, if we are talking about uh, the matching and the same type as the noise figure, so the input network mismatch can be chosen in other points to produce low noise design. And we are going to discuss what will be the point for the noise figure in uh, the next lecture uh, or the next video. Uh, as I said, let us collect all these pieces together in a single example. Uh, it is required to design an amplifier to have a gain of 11 dB at frequency 4 GHz. Uh, plot the constant gain circuits for GS equal 2 and 3 dB and GL equal 0 and 1 dB. So it is required to uh, plot uh, four constant gain circles, two for uh, the source matching network and two for the load matching step, uh, network. Uh, calculate and plot the return loss and overall gain uh, from 3 to 5 gigahertz and the transistor has the following scattering parameters, these S parameters at Z node equal 50 ohms. Effectively these S parameters are the S parameters which have been used in determining uh, the constant uh, gamma source circuits and gamma load circuits uh, in uh, the examples uh, which we have discussed now. So, according uh, to these S parameters, we say that at the center frequency 4 GHz, uh, the value of GS maximum is 1 over 1 minus S11 squared magnitude. So this one over one minus 0.75 squared. This would be 2.29. If we are going to take 10 log of this value, it would be 3.6 dB. Okay. Uh, the transducer gain of the transistor is 2.5. Uh, this 2.5 squared. The transducer gain is 2.5 squared. By taking, uh, this would be 6.25. By taking the log, 10 log of this value, it can be found, it would be 8 dB. On the other hand, the maximum matching uh, load gain, GL maximum, it would be 1 over 1 minus S22 squared. And according to the value of S22, 0.6, so GL maximum it is 1.56. By taking 10 log of this value, it would be 1.9 dB. Now, the overall gain of the amplifier for maximum gain, so the maximum transducer gain, GQ, GTU maximum, would be GS maximum plus G0 plus GL maximum, would be 3.6 dB plus 8 dB plus 1.9 dB. It would be 13.5 dB. But actually, uh, the requirement is 
we required to find a, a, or to design amplifier with again just 11 dB. Now the gain of the amplifier is greater than or the maximum gain of the amplifier is greater than uh, the required gain by 2.5 dB. So we can reduce this 2.5 dB uh, to introduce nearly constant gain over wider frequency band. So instead of designing the amplifier for maximum gain with a very narrow band, we are going to reduce the gain to be 11 uh, by reducing the overall gain by 2.5 dB uh, to obtain wide band operation. Uh, this can be done how? Uh, actually, this is the maximum gain. If we reduce the source gain, for example, instead of 3.6, to 2 so assuming that this is 2 and if we reduce the load maximum gain instead of 1.9 to be just 1 so 2 plus 1 plus 8 to be 11 so by using GS 2 dB instead of 3.6 and GL 1 dB instead of 1.9 and the transducer gain is still 8 dB because it depends on the transistor. It doesn't depend on uh, the input or my output matching the grid. So in this case, the overall gain, it would be 11 dB, which is a required gain. And it is expected that reducing this 2.5 dB will improve the bandwidth of the transistor. So in this case, we are going to reduce GS to be 2 dB instead of uh, 3.5 or 3.6 we are going to reduce it to do 2 dB actually we have discussed this we have drawn uh, the constant gamma circuit for 3 dB and constant gamma circuit for 2 dB so we are going to use 2 dB and to choose the value of gamma source and from this gamma source which is not gamma source maximum uh, we are going to design the input matching network which corresponds to this value of gamma source to match the 50 ohm to obtain this reflection coefficient on the other hand we are going to reduce the load gain from 1.9 to 1 dB so we are going to use GL 1 dB circle the intersection of GL 1 dB with the line coming from the origin would be gamma load now we are going to introduce a matching network to convert the 50 ohm to introduce reflection coefficient equal 0.22 with an angle 70 so this is a matching network gamma load this is a matching network which convert the 50 ohm to obtain this required gamma load maybe someone asked me Okay, uh, why we didn't uh, use, for example, instead of 2 dB and 1 dB, uh, maybe we can say that we can reduce the source gain to 3 dB only and the load gain to 0 dB. So 3 plus 0 plus 8, it would be 11. Okay, what is the difference here? If I use 3 dB, 3 dB here, would be this circle. The intersection of this circle with the line coming from uh, the origin here would be this point. Now this point is far from the origin. Okay, far from the origin it means that the operating bandwidth of this matching network it would be narrow. So if I use G source equals 3 dB. I'm going to use this gamma source and this gamma source will introduce narrow bandwidth because it is far from the origin. Even so, when I use in here GL equals 0 dB, I'm going, I'm not going to use any matching network. I'm going to connect directly the load to the output of the amplifier because gamma GL equals 0 dB actually passed by the origin. So, means that there is no need for any matching network. Effectively, the output matching network here is perfect, but the input matching network here is not the optimum. 
So usually I make compromise between uh, how to reduce the source gain and the load gain. Uh, I am not uh, going to reduce the source gain too much and the load gain is nearly the same. I'll, I'll obtain narrow band operation once again. I'm not uh, going to reduce the load gain too much and uh, the source gain is nearly the same as uh, uh, the maximum GS. So once again, I'll obtain narrow band operation. So I must make some optimization between reducing uh, GS and GL. That's why I have chosen here GS equal 2 dB and GL is 1 dB. And I have not chosen uh, I have not chosen uh, GS 3 dB and GL 0 dB. All right. Okay, so according to this, the transducer gain by using a uh, small gain for the source and small gain for the load, it would be G source 2 dB plus G load 1 dB plus the transducer gain 8 dB, which is 11 dB. By using this matching network, which is not obtaining the maximum gain, we could obtain the gain as a function, the transducer gain as a function of the frequency, like this, at the frequency 4 gigahertz exactly, it, uh, it is 11 uh, dB, and it can be noted that it has nearly 1 dB difference along uh, around 25% of the operating bandwidth. On the other hand, the return loss of the input circuit here is merely constant. Maybe it is not very good. It is not matching. Uh, it is nearly around minus 5 dB only. Uh, but at least it is constant over the frequency band. So the main advantage here, we have obtained nearly constant performance over the operating bandwidth, even so it is not the optimum performance of this transistor. The optimum performance is obtained at the maximum gain condition. But the maximum gain condition, as we have mentioned at the beginning, is in very narrow band operation. Now we have nearly flat operation over the operating bandwidth. This is actually uh, very important in many applications, assuming that we are talking about wide band communication system and so on. So it would be preferred to use wide band operation rather than optimum operation. So we know that it is seen that the desired gain of the 11 dB is achieved at 4 gigahertz. Uh, the bandwidth which is again varies plus or minus 1 dB or less is about 25% which is considered better than the bandwidth of maximum gain design. Uh, on the other hand, the return loss uh, is not very good. Uh, being to be about just 5 dB it is not good because actually we are expecting the return loss is around 10 dB. Uh, however, this is due to the uh, deliberate mismatch introduced in the matching section to achieve uh, the specified gain. However, as I said, if I have nearly constant performance for both the gain and the return loss, this would be very important if we are talking about wideband operation, especially for uh, communication systems. Uh, this is how to design a constant gain amplifier by using uh, constant uh, gamma load circuits and constant uh, gamma source circuits. Uh, in the following video, we are going to discuss how to calculate the noise figure of uh, the transistor and how to obtain the minimum noise figure for a specific transistor and what is the relation between the matching and the noise figure. And we will see that we may uh, reduce the matching to improve the noise figure. So this is another point which should be taken into consideration. So see you in the next video.